All right, now it's for the very fun part. I mean, the whole process has been fun, for me at least, but now it's time for the really good part. Fine detail. This is where most of the sculpting now is going to be done using alphas rather than um, having to sculpt everything by hand. We've done a little bit of this so far, mainly with the, uh, the gel sacks, but now it's time to apply that to our whole model, or at least to areas where it would be beneficial to do so. So let's focus on the back here first. We're going to be using pretty much entirely just the draw tool. I'm going to smooth out some of this first. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to add in some is I want to add in some uh, wrinkles, but I don't want it to affect the top because we're going to be putting some scales on the top. So I'm going to freeze the top. So again, I've been using these two alpha packs, Crack Wrinkles and Reptile Skin Scales, a lot for my projects with this game. And I would highly, highly encourage you to download it. It's very, very useful. So in the Cracks uh, alpha pack, I'm going to go down here near the bottom, and I'm going to find some of these alphas, like this one. And this one's a kind of, uh, well, it's, they're wrinkles. So as you can see, adding in a little bit of that fine detail. Now I have um, rotate along stroke activated with this alpha because it's very useful in order to get cracks that kind of bend or if you need to go them at a particular angle it's very useful to have that turned on and I'm in, I'm varying my size here as I go to make sure that not every single wrinkle I draw is the exact same all right that should do it for that control D will deselect the frozen area while I have it unfrozen I'm gonna smooth it out a tiny bit and then I'm going to put something else. I'm going to go to Reptiles here. And I'm going to pick this one. Not sure exactly what it's called. Alien skin, I guess. That's kind of appropriate. But it's this sort of... Hold on. Let me increase the strength here a little bit. It's this kind of uh, cell, cell fractal uh, scale pattern which looks pretty good on this. All right, and then for the next one, I'm gonna pick, say, this one, this uh, Reptile Skin 01. I'm going to paint it in here a little bit. Now with this brush, I'm going to go to the brush options and I'm going to use spacing so that the brush itself doesn't overlap or the brush doesn't overlap with itself as I'm drawing and I can get a very clean repeating pattern. Might reduce the strength just a little bit more. It's also really important that you save this step for last. Mainly because it's very difficult to sculpt on top of this without um, destroying the detail, but also because you want to make sure that your model looks as good as it can without any of this detail. If your model doesn't look good without, if your model doesn't look good with no fine detail like this, then no amount of detail work is going to bring it to life. All right, 
That should do it for that. And now I'm going to focus on the wrinkles up here. Go back to my cracks and wrinkles. And then I'll tackle the underside here. Now if I look back at the reference of the leech, you'll see that the ribbed pattern is very present, but it also has a lot of other roughness to it. So I'll really quickly add that. Probably go back to the reptile section. And I'll pick, I don't know. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll go to the brush options here and I'll increase the rotation amplitude to its maximum. I'll use spacing so the brush doesn't constantly overlap with itself. And I'll also invert it so I don't have to hold down control to get it to sink into the mesh. And I'm also going to increase the depth variation so that it's not being applied at a constant pressure. All right, probably throw a few more wrinkles going up this way from these ribs. Okay, now I'm going to focus on the uh, the plates back here. So with these, I can actually sculpt them. I can make these pretty rough, but this is where I can really start to make use of some of these uh, alphas that are based more around cracks rather than wrinkles. Because what I can do is, let's say I pick this alpha. But with this, I can draw some grooves that kind of travel along these ridges that I've already defined. So that's a start on the bones. And then what I'll do is I can grab some of the individual cracks and, and I can use the drag mode to sink those in. Make it look like maybe this creature has taken some damage in the past. All right, and there you go. I may do a few more, uh, yeah, and then also that. All right, there we go. So I might still do a little bit more detail work to this with the alphas and maybe a bit more hand sculpting, but that is the workflow that I use for creating these kinds of organic alien-looking creatures. Hmm.